What's up, YouTube? This is Two Off of TV. So you know, I'm just, I just gotta, I'm enjoying this, and I'm, I'm loving making this video. I got a big ass smile on my face, like bruh man with a big ass double decker turkey, ham, and bacon sandwich, some tomatoes on it, bruh man. You know, bruh man from the fifth below. Yep, Russell Westbrook. You know, finally. He's getting the respect that he deserves, okay? Now, granted, he's playing at a level that warrants that type of respect, okay? And there's still some things that I don't like about Russell. He turns the ball over still a little bit too much, but, you know, every player has flaws. He still turns the ball over a little bit too much, but his turnovers are still down from uh, the last couple of seasons. But... The flaws that you have to deal with with him pale in comparison to the level of play that he's been playing at for a while now. Now, on television, they'll say since they traded Clint Capella, but he's actually been playing like this at this level since after that Christmas Day game. Okay? After that Christmas Day game, after that debacle where they lost to the Golden State Warriors, okay? got blown out by the Warriors on national television, all right? That's the last game where I saw Westbrook play like West Brick, where uh, he took a high, a high volume of shots. I think he took like 32 shots, but eight of them were three-pointers, old eight, and he wasn't, you know, those shots were more perimeter orientated, um, which is not Westbrook's game, okay? I get so irritated at some of these media analysts who say that, well, they still harp on the fact that Westbrook doesn't shoot threes or, or well from three. Who cares? Like, Stephen Smith gets me with that shit. Okay, look, Bernard King was not a good three-point shooter. Adrian Dantley wasn't a good three-point shooter. Uh, Alex English wasn't a good three-point shooter. Jordan became a good three-point shooter, but he wasn't a prolific three-point shooter. The same thing with Dominique Wilkins. He became a good three-point shooter, especially for the era he played in, or at least an average three-point shooter. But he wasn't prolific. That wasn't their part of the game. That wasn't the strength of their game. Okay, their collective games. Stop trying to make Russell into what you want him to be and accept him for what he is. Okay, and he's maximized his strengths. Okay. Since that Christmas Day game, Russell Westbrook is averaging over 32 points, 7.7 .7 rebounds, 7.5 assists, 1.9 steals on 53% shooting from the floor. Since the trade for Clint Capella, I think it was February the 6th, his numbers are even more out of out of the other world. I think it's more like 34 points, 8 rebounds, like 7 assists, two over 2 steals, on 54% shooting. Uh, in some ways, his numbers kind of mirror a hot streak for a guy like Adrian Dantley, with the exception of the assists. You know, it kind of mir mirrors Adrian Dantley. And the way he's playing now is the way that I envision him playing on a team that uh, can maximize his strengths to the greatest degree. And in some ways, this team has become Westbrook's team. Now, James Harden is still averaging 34.9 points. Uh, he's still the de facto leader of this team, all right? Well, excuse me, he's still the official leader of this team. But to me, the de facto leader of this team is Russell Westbrook, because you can just see the way they play. That's one of the problems I have with, with James Harden. James Harden is a phenomenal player, okay? My criticism, maybe sometimes I go a little too far with it, okay? I'm a passionate person, all right? I'm an emotional person, even though for some reason you're African-American and you're passionate and you show emotion. Somehow it's a bad thing. We're all supposed to be these, you know, these 
emotionless robots. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we don't supposed to give a fuck about nothing. I don't give a fuck about nothing. Fuck that shit. Don't deal with me. Don't give a fuck about none of that bullshit. Oh, man, did you hear, man? Clarissa died, man. I don't give a fuck, nigga. I don't give a fuck about nothing. But anyway, yeah, sometimes I would go a little too hard with James Hart, man, but it's because I know that he, the way that they were playing, Okay, uh, earlier this season, when everybody was just standing around watching him shoot 23s and score 40 points, but they would lose um, to the better teams. That, that wasn't championship basketball. Now, I'm not totally convinced that small ball works because Mike D'Antoni's track record speaks for itself. But then again, he's never had a Russell Westbrook on his team. He's never had a guy on his team with the heart and passion of Russell Westbrook that was the star. You know, Steve Nash, hey, it is what it is. All right, Hall of Famer, great player. But to me, he's not as multidimensional. His game was not as, don't get me wrong, uh, Steve Nash was a hell of a player, man. Uh, great shooter, excellent passer. But to me, Russell is just more dynamic than Steve Nash. Um, But this team is essentially Westbrook's team now. He's an alpha. Um, the thing about it, too, during the last 21 games, since that Christmas Day game, the Rockets are 14-7, and seven, including last night's game. Now, that may not sound overwhelming like, you know, uh, 20 and 1 or 19 and 2, but you got to take into account that we're not talking about a five game streak, we're not talking about a seven game streak, we're talking about a 21 game streak. They are playing 66% basketball. And during that time, they've beaten some good teams and they played some good teams. It's not like they're playing like a bunch of bad teams. They've beaten the, uh, the Lakers in that stretch, played them twice, uh, beat them the second time. Westbrook had 41 in that game. And despite the fact that the Sixers, excuse me, the, the Lakers had a tremendous lineup against them, the physicality uh, of the, of the uh, Houston Rockets eventually wore that team down and won, even though they, the height differential was incredible. And that's another thing about the Lakers, too. That's another indication of why a lot of people say that the Lakers, even though they have LeBron James and Anthony Davis, some people question that team's overall toughness in the playoffs. Uh, we will see. Uh, but they beat the Lakers. They beat the Utah Jazz twice. And now, after last night, they've beaten the Boston Celtics twice during that stretch. So they've been beating some good teams. Like, during this time, they've been playing and beating some good teams. It's not like that streak with the Heat or arguably even Milwaukee, okay, where it was, you know, some good team, but a lot of bad teams. This this has been good to great teams they've been beating. Um, so that's what makes it, make it pretty impressive. Um, Westbrook has pretty much eschewed the three-point shot. Last night, he was one of two from three-point range. He's not taking the three, unless it's a good open look. And I love it. I love it. The last couple of games I've been looking at the, the stat sheet, one or two, two for four, one for two, you know, uh, maybe 0 for one. He, he's not taking that shot unless it's a good open look. Um, he's been pretty much, even with the long mid-range, he's not taking that as much. It's mostly just in the paint. It's in the paint. He might pull up for... Uh, a 12-footer, a 14-footer. It's all about the percentages. And this is the type of, I'm telling you, I love, when, I watch the, when I'm watching Houston play, and I'm watching Westbrook play, it, it, it almost takes me back to, like, fucking, honestly, watching him play? Fuck 1999. It's like going back to 19, 1990. 1990. Like, I mean... You don't see that anymore. You don't see guys 
just scorning the paint. You know, that's considered unskilled. You know what I'm saying? Even though the percentages, you know, like the, the, the generation with Jordan and Bernard King, uh, Adrian Dantley, Julius Irvin, uh, all those guys, you know, they were taught to go for the high percentage shot. You know, if you got the three, when the three-point line was implemented in 1979-80, if it was a nice look or if it was essential that you had to go for that shot, that's fine. But the three-point shot was secondary. Like, like it wasn't a primary weapon in this, these players' mind. Remember, when they grew up, there was no three-point shot. So you always went for the high percentage shot. Um, and then even when the three-point shot was implemented, it was really, you had specialists for that. You had your Craig Hodges. You had your uh, uh, Trent Tuckers. You know, you had guys who were stars uh, but didn't necessarily start off shooting that shot at first, too. Uh, like Dale Ellis didn't initially start off being prolific in three point line, I'm sure correctly. It took a couple of years for him to really start shooting from that range. Bird, his first year, was prolific for the season. But Bird always said he didn't really like that shot. And Bird didn't really weaponize that shot until like his fifth or sixth year in the NBA. And then it, it became a more popular shot. But still, even into the 90s, you had specialists uh, like Kerr or Tim Legler or Hubert Davis. You know, or even uh, a Kenny Smith became a three-point specialist toward the end of his career. Um, but Russell Westbrook, he's, he's, he's doing it mostly in the paint. Over the past 21 games or so, he's averaging 20 points or more in the paint. He's just doing it. He's, he's playing old school, man. Even his the type of shots he's taking look better. Uh, they look like he's essentially, right now, playing like a forward, more or less, with the spacing now that Clint Capella is out. He's playing like a, a, a forward. Um, and then another thing that I like about, and I've always said this, I've always said this, I've always thought that Russell Westbrook should move over to the two. Um, lead the point guard, the, the official point guard, point guard, excuse me, duties to James Harden. James Harden, I do think, you know, can be selfish, okay? We, we all know that. Um, but I think that James Harden is a, is a somewhat better point guard than Russell Westbrook. Russell is more of an attacker. He's more of a, he has more of a scorer's mentality. He's more of a Ah, you know, he's more of that type of nature. James Harden is still a great scorer per se, but he's more methodical with his scoring. You know what I'm saying? Um, even before he's become this prolific scorer on James Harden, he was he always came across to me as a little bit more of a James Harden has always come across to me more as a combo guard who is a shooting guard that can play point guard. Russell Westbrook is a point guard, was a point guard, but really was a shooting guard. And um, I think that naturally, if you had to choose between the two, it's better to put James Harden at the one and, and uh, Westbrook at the two. Okay? Just because I think that Westbrook is just naturally that much when he just has to focus on scoring, he's much better, much more uh, efficient in that way. Um, and he's also a little bit better. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, Harden is a little bit better overall when you consider his usage at taking care of the basketball. Just a little bit better than Westbrook at taking care of the basketball, although both of them have their turnover issues. So I love what they're doing right now with small ball, uh, micro ball, really. I don't think we've really seen anything like this with a team this small for this extended period of time. Um, the thing about it, it looks great. 
can this work? Can this work in the playoffs? That is what I'm not 100% sold on. In the playoffs, the game slows down a little bit. It's more of a half-court affair. Uh, so, if the Rockets, I'll say this. I'm not convinced that this can work. Uh, past the, maybe the second round. But if the Rockets can impose their will on these better teams, if they can pull it off, uh, it would be phenomenal. This would change my perception of both players. If they were somehow able to win the championship, I don't think they're going to. But if they're able to pull off some miracle run and win a championship, my estimation of both players change totally. And I think the way the league looks at Russell Westbrook should change uh, completely. Um, John Morant recently said that he thought that NBA, the NBA uh, family, well, I guess NBA fans, don't really appreciate Russell Westbrook's play style. Um, you know, it is what it is, man. I love the energy that Russell Westbrook brings. I know that he, he's not everybody cup. He's not everybody's cup of tea. Um, and sometimes, like I said, in the past, Westbrook can get too caught up in the one-on-one -on -one aspect of basketball. But at this time, you know, he's really honed in on something. He's playing arguably the best basketball of his career. Uh, right now, he's shooting 47.2% from the floor this season, which when you consider his earlier struggles, it's phenomenal. Because you got to remember, at one point this season, when everybody was really on him, when he was shooting like crap, Westbrook, he was shooting like 37% from the floor or something. So for him to have made a 10 percentage point increase in his shooting percentage this late into the season is phenomenal. That goes to show you the, the change in the fortunes with this team. And um, they're a dangerous team in the playoffs. I will say that. Uh, anybody that wants to take, that thinks that this is going to be the same uh, situation last year with, West, with uh, Russell and OKC, I don't think it's the same thing. Um, I think they're a dangerous team. Um, they've shown that they can beat the better teams in the NBA uh, with this streak. And uh, one thing you can't teach in the NBA is they say you can't teach size, and that's true. Um, but another thing that you can't teach is heart. And Russell has a lot of that. And I, like I said, with him uh, becoming the de facto leader of this team, um, I think that the, and him kind of changing the identity, the, the identity, excuse me, of the team out there on the court. You never know what's going to happen, man. Uh, the playoffs is a funny thing. You know, you never know. So tell me what you guys think.